Do we have a national debt crisis in the United States? I want you to post your thoughts about that in the comments section below, whether or not you live in the United States, because our national debt will affect the whole world. We're going to talk about that as well as gold and silver in this crazy environment with $33 trillion in debt as we explore. You cannot print gold and silver. You cannot digitize it. They must be mined in the physical form. However, there is something about gold and silver that a lot of us in this community really have a hard time uh, grasping, and that is the fact that there is a lot of paper and electronic forms of gold and silver out there, the derivatives market. And it is those derivatives and unfunded liabilities that is part of the problem in this country and around the world. It's not a United States problem. And by the way, unfunded liabilities, national debt to the tune of $33 trillion plus is not a partisan problem. It is a bipartisan problem. Both parties and pretty much uh, it seems like all uh, political ideologies are in tuned or involved in this uh, that or at least have any form of power in Congress, including some of the independents that are in Congress. And the thing is, is that every nation has some sort of national debt. Some are worse than others. And we can take a look at it compared to the gross domestic product compared to the debt. Well, let's take a look through the past here in the United States. In 1960, it was 52.41%. That's the debt to GDP ratio. In 1980, it was down from that. 34.67% according to the U.S. debt clock. In 2000, it had climbed to 56.26%. And now it is 122.41%. So that is a massive number. Those are numbers that rival what it was during wartime, during World War II. I think of World War II, I think it was close to 130%. But what's going on here? Well, this kind of spending, uh, the last time we had this kind of massive spending was during the COVID pandemic. And uh, that was considered emergency spending because the government essentially shut everything down. And so people were getting paid. In fact, you're, I'm still getting a lot of calls from uh, loan scammers about this, uh, you know, about COVID money that was going to go out to all these businesses and like. So there's a lot of money to hand out. They've not spent all that money yet. However, right now, uh, the, United, the Federal Reserve is actually pulling back spending. They're doing quantitative tightening. But it's marginal compared to the amount of cash that's out there. But that cash and that digital money, the digital version of cash that's out there is something that is quite profound. And in a, in a sense, it's its own derivative market in a sense. You know, when you think about all of the cash that's printed and distributed around the entire world with 58% of the nations utilizing cash dollars in transactions, these dollars that transact around the world, uh, if they were to come back, come flooding back into the United States, we'd be a world of hurt. There's no question about that. We'd see hyperinflation to the likes we've never seen before. And that very well could crash our dollar. Uh, but no one is going to do that. No one um, has any uh, interest in doing such a thing because they need those dollars. And that's why, in a sense, even though the dollar is losing value by inflation at a tune now of 3.7% year over year, up from where it was at 3.2%, you know, this is something that is uh, uh, certainly means that... Uh, you know, the dollar is losing value, but it is too big to fail. That's right. I said it. And who would have thought that that would ever be the case with where we're at now? Because I think we're in a debt crisis in this country because we're not at war. 
but we have near the the debt to GDP ratio is at war as, as a wartime uh, footing, and so to me that's a crisis. But and to many of you it probably is too. But for most Americans and the politicians, they're just digits on a screen, watching these numbers tick away. By the time I record this video, if I was to have every single of those dollars, single one of those dollars that was ticking away in the U.S. national debt clock, I would be a very rich man, for sure, in the time that I record this video. It's absolutely insane to think about the amount of debt that we have here in this country. And that's not even counting the unfunded liabilities. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Uh, deficit spending uh, adds to the debt in this country. And uh, right now, even though uh, they are pulling back and now they have a net uh, intake of cash, there's still a lot of cash out there. And by the way, we've added over a trillion dollars in the course of a week and a half uh, towards the end of July. Not a lot of people have talked about that, which is added to this $33 trillion debt here. But the beauty of gold and silver, um, as we head into now, uh, as I record this video, we are hours away from the Federal Reserve's next meeting where they are 99% sure, according to the Fed Watch tool, that they're going to skip. Some people may call it a pause, but they're skipping for now, uh, raising interest rates another quarter of a percentage point. They will meet again in November. Likely, they will raise interest rates a quarter of a, point, a percentage point then. Now, if they do that, that means that because inflation is not under control, it's, it's getting out of their control. Prices for goods and services are rising. There are some predictions now that oil very well could go up over $100 a barrel as OPEC and Saudi Arabia are cutting. They're continuing to cut production, which is going to mean higher prices for fuel, um, oil in the, in the coming um, a year, likely. Uh, in fact, uh, crude oil right now, as I record this video, is, is well over $91 a barrel. And But the dollar index uh, is up. It's up. It's, it's bolstered. And gold and silver, for all intents and purposes, considering what the Federal Reserve is going to be doing, are they are holding their own. And uh, the price for these metals may seem low to many of us, including myself, by the way. I think they're both undervalued. But I do believe that... For everything that's going on uh, and all the stuff that's working against it, um, they're holding their own fairly well. Uh, natural market forces are a very powerful thing. And, uh, and I think that uh, as we continue to uh, accumulate and hold on to our precious metals, be thankful that we have them. Because you never know what could come down the pike uh, politically uh, um, or economically. And, uh, but nonetheless, gold and silver have maintained a store of value for quite a long time, thousands of years. And um, that store of value is different different than price. And when you have the, come to the understanding of that, uh, you, you feel better about your acquisitions, that's for sure. I know I do. I, I'm very uh, fortunate to have silver and gold in my portfolio. And I know many of you are as well. Because, yes, I do believe that we are in the midst of a debt crisis in this country. And, uh, and really, most Americans and most people around the world will ignore it and won't pay attention to it, to it until it actually affects them. How will it affect them? Um, by the general populace losing trust in our currency. Um, we saw it in China. I just posted a video recently about China having a currency and a, a, a crisis, and they had a gold crisis too, and that could come here in a different way and with a different approach. Uh, but nonetheless, the gold itself uh, will not falter. It will not be altered or changed. Uh, you may be able to suppress the price of it through the central bank actions and activities, um, make it undesirable based off the price. But when you look beyond that, you see what's really going on in the world in spite of what the media tells us, and then you know that we are doing the right thing by, at the very least, holding on to our gold and silver. Even if you feel nervous about the markets, feel nervous about putting more money into gold and silver, I can understand that. But if you've accumulated any measure of it, hold on to it as a safeguard, as the ultimate insurance policy. That's what it's about. Because in the end, 
uh, in this country and really most Western nations around the world, uh, there is a lack of uh, financial education out there. Simple, common sense things you can do to be uh, good stewards of your money. And so I would encourage you to think about that and consider that uh, as you navigate the world around you and your own finances. As the value of your dollar continues to decline, you have to be uh, more smart about how you spend your money and about how you save your money and make your money work for you. And one of those areas is could be by having gold and silver in your portfolio. Um, are they going to explode anytime soon? No. Uh, even amidst everything that's going on, uh, sort of a, of a black swan event, which black swan events can actually have the opposite effect, you know, uh, you know, then typically, you know, it's going to take a while. It's a game of patience, as I've talked about in a, in a previous video. But when you have over 257 paper versions of silver to every one ounce of gold or silver mined, and you have over 128 of those for gold, uh, then it gives you an idea of what we're dealing with in terms of price and in terms of what the actual metal represents. So let me know what your thoughts are. And this is bad news, $33 trillion in debt, but gold and silver will hold their own throughout no matter what the debt is and no matter what politicians do. We know we have gold and silver in our portfolio. So I hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.